America's is back on top. My goodness, seeing Sen win was amazing. I mean, we got one of the best grand finals I think we have ever seen in the history of Valorant. We went five maps and it was close all the way to the end. It was insane. It was probably the most earned Masters Trophy that America's has like ever had. I mean, you just talk about the journey that Sentinels had from like not even the beginning of this season, but not even the preseason, but two years ago. Sentinels were on this like down spiral of just trying to recreate that magic they had from the first Masters event, and then they had like uh, they had Shroud on the team, and I, you know I don't want to recap the whole thing, but like they had the Brazilians and. Then the Brazilians didn't quite work out. They kind of tried making it work with Marv, then it just didn't work out. And then they got John QT, and John QT has brought so much to this team. It's insane. Then they went from having Psycho to then having Kaplan, and Kaplan really tried bringing that team from, from irrelevancy at that point because they were just losing. And my goodness, like, the... the the changes that Sentinels did is kind of like the blueprint that other teams need to follow. Sentinels like re uh, kept their best pieces. So they knew they had Tens who was super consistent. He just needed a change in coaching. Then they had Zekin. Zekin was insane, like best player on Xset. I was watching FNS's stream. He was saying, that guy Zekin, I knew he was that good when I was playing against him. Uh, when I was in Optic, and now that he's earned that trophy, he totally deserves it. I mean, let's talk about Zekin for a little bit bef before I go back. The guy had 101 kills. He is tied with another player. I don't know right now off the top of my head. This is just my reaction. He is tied for the most kills in a series ever. That dude is insane. And he's only like, what, 19? My goodness, I mean, if he wins another trophy, if he wins two more trophies, I guess he would be considered the GOAT. And the way that Sentinels are playing, it seems like they're prepped to go for another trophy. Maybe it's just recency bias, you know, heat, the heat of the moment speaking right now, but man, that kid is crazy. Um, <clears throat> we spoke about John QT, about his journey, how he kind of just came from... Uh, he had that the Morocco story about him immigrating and you know trying to find a place and he played an M80 and he fell short But now this time he's done it. He has won the Masters trophy it dude. It looked like The map it looked like it was going to Gen G It looked like the momentum was gonna go back to Gen G at one point and the way that they turned it around It's just you, it's a combination of John QT being a fantastic IGL, Kaplan calling timeouts and pauses perfectly, and a combination of Zelsa's being like the vibe merchant, and bringing everything together, all three of those elements alongside with just like raw talent that this team has, and it's like the perfect storm. And they, they made the comeback, they tied up the series, and then they take it on the last map. I mean, let me talk about Zelsus for a moment. The guy was in a pool of mediocrity from two years ago. He was he was part of Sentinels at one point, but that's because he was a substitute. And then he be, then they let him go, and then they, he joined back on the team. He went to, he was in Cloud Nine, and that team choked at Americas. Didn't qualify for a single international event. Choked in uh, Last Chance Qualifier. It's insane, like, the amount that Zelsus has gone through to become the player that he is right now. And like I was saying, he's the vibe merchant. If you don't know what that means, it just basically means someone who really brings up the team, no matter if they're down or, or if they're up, they're bringing even more energy into it. And it's so cool to see that even when they were down, they managed to bring it back. And I think... I think from what I've seen, 
It was largely in part due to Zelsus, because there was table slams. There was frustration on Zekken's face, and Zekken's not usually a guy who gets, like, too frustrated. So, the fact that they were able to keep team morale so high up is such an amazing thing. And then Saucy, I mean, let's talk about, I mean, not only in this series, but he had so many clutches through the entire tournament. You have, like, Tarek, FNS, all those guys on that stream saying that he would be a Hall of Famer if Valorant had a Hall of Fame. He would be like first ballot. And I can't deny that. The guy is so good. I mean, dude left his championship winning team. And now I understand he was getting the bag. But he left the team where he had perfect communication. And he went to a team where... The communication skills were questionable, and yeah, they did struggle that first year, but Saucy was the one able to adapt and become part of that team, and he's just been so good. He's probably, like, I mean, they're all really good additions to Sentinels, but Saucy is a very good piece because it doesn't matter how much the meta changes, in my opinion, like, you're always going to have a need for initiators. So we talked about Zekin, we talked about John QT, we talked about Zelsis, we talked about Saucy. But who we really gotta talk about is Tens. Man, I'm not gonna lie, when I first started watching Valorant, I heard so many things about this Tens guy. And mind you, this was like in uh, Reykjavik, Reykjavik 2. Reykjavik 2, um, you know, that's the one optic one. And I kept hearing all these things about tens and I was like, who is this tens guy? <laughs> you guys are talking about probably somebody who's not even good anymore. And so like, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of low key a hater at first, but then I was like, nah, I mean, you know, he's just not as good as people say he is. And that's why, because man, the, the Sentinels fans are so passionate that even when they're down, like, that you'll still root for them. And to the fans of Sentinels, I gotta say, you guys are a passionate bunch. And I love that. I love that in a fan base. And so, yeah, I was not a huge fan of Tens, but then, you know, slowly as I actually got to know, like, his, uh, who he was, I actually started liking him a little bit more. And then, you know, at some point I was like, okay, he's good. He's just, he's not surrounded by the right people. And, the fact that Sentinels was able to retain him and not just see him as, you know, some sort of marketing tool or anything like that, but to actually see that he is still a fantastic player. And the way he turned around his career from being that duelist, and then they tried doing the double dive and that didn't work last year. And now he literally just moved back to support and now he's supporting Zekin. Like, dude, that is so clutch on his part. And so I, I really respect Tens for stepping outside of his ego and being like, okay, it's not my time anymore on that role. Let me do what I need to do to help everybody else on this team. And guess what? Guess what? He's still a fragging menace out there on the server. Imagine that. He he reprised his role uh, in, in, in being one of the top fraggers on that team. But he was playing support and it's and it's so it's so awesome seeing that type of thing someone who can like reinvent their career i guess the closest parallel will be to like a chris jericho type because um that's like what i think about the most when i think about someone reinventing their career someone who can keep adapting to situations like that so tens massive respect to him so yeah i mean that's ma mainly all my gushing about Sentinels. I mean, Kaplan drew Sparks. I mean, dude, they turned this roster into a disaster to a to a cinema masterclass. And um, I think that's awesome. Now, Genji, I mean, this is a kind of sad part, talking about Pacific and stuff like that, because, man, that region can't catch a break. It's like they get to the grand final and it just never works out for them whether it's Paper Rex or Gen G now. It sucks for them because I think that they do deserve at least one trophy. But man, 
NA has been on top for like half a year now. And not NA, Americas. Catch me sleeping there, holy cow. Sometimes I say NA, but really I mean Americas. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just, I'm just super happy. I'm happy that Americas is back on top with uh, Sentinels. I mean, I would be equally as happy if it was loud. Uh, but I'm glad that it is Sentinels. I feel like that fan base has been suffering for quite a bit. So I'm glad to see them get their moment again. And hopefully, hopefully NRG gets its moment in the, under the sun and the loud people get their moment under the sun. I really want a LATAM team to at some point, you know, be on top as well. But that might take a little bit of time. So yeah, uh, quick thoughts. I know this is uh, usually... A uh, congratulations videos are kind of short but man I just felt like I needed to talk about like every single detail about like these guys because I feel like they deserve it and it's champ not champions it's um the grand finals for Madrid so yeah haters guide coming out soon also new episode of exit frag uh, I'm not in it but a bunch of the other guys are in it so congratulations Sentinels with that goodbye Good night. Bang. Have a nice day.